This video will show and explain the fastest way of getting good at this game. I will explain how it works and then I will give a full example of me doing it. I will also show you that it's possible to carry games despite having bad teammates. This is a game I should carry, right? I'm the highest rank player in my team and I'm playing my main champion. The enemy team has a Grandmaster jungler who is also playing his main and a Grandmaster mid laner who actually does really well despite the weird pick. So at the start of the game, I try to sneak in a ward on their red buff because Malphite and Yi are pretty damn useless level 1. But they see me early and try chasing me for some reason but I know I'm safe because they have no real lockdown and have terrible damage. In fact, Yi is wasting his jungle time by chasing. He actually keeps chasing and tanks a tower shot and stays for more. As soon as he activates the second tower shot, I know I can kill him with ignite. He then uses his alpha strike to dodge my attack, but I walk him back into the tower to make him tank another tower shot. Now even though I'm low, I don't recall because I'll lose too much gold and experience. And I can stay because I have Garen's passive healing and I'm also using the second wind rune, both of which heal me. And the heal extra, the lower HP I am. Now I'm high enough HP that I can fight him without being in danger of dying. I start this fight with 60% HP versus 110%. He starts with a targeted attack which draws minion aggro onto him. Even though he doesn't directly hit me, the secondary damage in a cone hits me which draws minion aggro. But I start with my spin which is not a targeted attack meaning I take no minion damage during the spin. He also keeps resetting minion aggro during my spin. And at the end when I do draw minion aggro with my silence, I run back and reset it. So I went from 60 to 45% HP, he went from 110 to 80%. But remember that I will heal extra the lower HP I am. I'm also leveling up first because of the first blood experience. He fights me here thinking he's still stronger than me, he's not. I can start with silence this time because there are no enemy minions and then I just chase him down with the spin. Here I basic attack twice to charge my grasp which only activates if you're in combat for 3 seconds and then it remains for 5 seconds and resets if you do damage or take damage. Now the lane is pushing away, but it's important I don't fast push it because that will give him easy last hits under the tower, where I can't really fight him. I need to slow push and fight him during it to get him low enough that I can kill him by the time the wave reaches the tower. Here I know he wants this minion so I start my spin before he gets there. I save my silence until after he uses his first skill to slow me because my silence removes any slow effects and then I reduce most of the tower damage with my shield. Here I know he will come for this minion because I used all of my abilities, but my grasp is back up so I basic attack with it. This also keeps his shield off because he only gets his shield if he doesn't take any damage for 8 seconds. And now my silence is back up again and another grasp silence trade which also prevents his shield again. And I continue to slow push until the wave crashes meanwhile I zone him away from last hits. Just before the wave crashes, I grasp silence to remove his shield and just wait for my silence again before I can dive him. Now he's low health and I have my shield, ultimate, ignite and flash. So I start with ignite and activate my silence. Shield just before he attacks me, ultimate and flash out for a clean dive. I also deny him this wave and the next wave also. Here I can stay and clear the next wave because Yi is on the other side. And of course by the time I get back, he has pushed the wave into me, giving me a free freeze. So to set up the freeze, I tank the minions and pull them away from the tower until my next wave arrives. It's important you pull the wave away from the tower because when the next wave comes, the minions will just ignore you and run towards your minions. And if it's too close to the tower, they will run into the tower. The freeze means that there are extra enemy minions, so they will kill my minions faster, which denies him gold and experience, unless he overextends all the way here. 
and if he does, I can chase him down with this extra space and poke him because I'm stronger. But here I make a mistake and start my spin when I don't have my silence because he slows me and runs away and I can't remove the slow so he gets out of range. But my silence is almost back up so I try chasing him to at least do the silence grasp damage but I chase into the tower and here he could have ulted me under the tower but he didn't. It wouldn't have killed me anyway because I activate my shield as soon as I get into the tower but I still lose the trade. It's fine because I just need him lower HP so I can execute him with my ultimate. You can see my spin and silence are 3 seconds away and if he keeps chasing I can turn on him. And he does. He slows me. I turn to chase him with my spin and I cancel the slow with my silence. This is an easy kill because my spin will do a lot of damage along with my ignite and then grasp silence damage and ultimate to execute. And now I can stay for the next wave also because I'm too strong for even a full health master Yi. Even if I tank some tower shots I can still kill him. But as soon as I see Mao fight I turn around straight away. He misses his ultimate because I stopped chasing but then I have to flash. He keeps chasing for the shutdown but I get my honey through and now he's in danger. But here I make a mistake. I should have saved my silence for after he slows me so I could remove it but now he can slow me and run away. My support is kind of trolling by being here and leaving his carry. I'm the last person who needs help. He could have at least stopped Malphite's back but he stays just to take tower gold meanwhile our carry gets killed on the other side. So after I've taken the tower my laning phase is now over. The mid game macro for Garen is pretty simple. After recalling, just run down mid lane, push it if it's not pushed or join a fight nearby or if you sense a fight starting nearby but don't force the fight unless you have clear number advantage. If not then run to a side lane, push it out and join back to the middle. A pushed side lane will force one or two enemies to go catch the wave, meanwhile you're back with your team to maybe force a fight with a numbers advantage. If you have enough information to keep pushing the next wave then you can, but that's an exception because it's usually safer to push and then group. I ward before pushing out mid and I see my Ramus trying to engage so I follow up. It's a 3v3 here if we fight and we easily win because I'm fed and we have good engage with Ramus. Here I take this route to cut him off so we can at least get one kill. I save my ultimate for Master Yi and get a double kill. I push out my wave before we get a free Harold and then I recall for boots and again sprint down the mid lane. My team loses the fight before I get there but I bought dead man's plate for exactly this reason. They overextend so I silence Thresh and chase him down with spin. But the low health Nami gets too close so I switch target because Thresh is behind me meaning I can always turn and kill him. So I go for Nami first meanwhile Thresh dies to my team. And then for Yi and get another double kill. Again I push out mid and then go push a side lane and then back to mid all the while I'm healing up. If I don't carry from this position then I don't really deserve to win and it's an easy carry actually as long as I don't make too many big mistakes. Funny I say that because this is where I start thinking that the game is already won and and so I pretty much just turn my brain off and just start running at them. I see Nami waste her bubble so I know it's a free dive. I should have flashed out here after the ultimate because I end up losing too much HP to the tower and have to flash away anyway. Now Master Yi can chase me down with his ultimate and damage through my shield with his true damage. We do end up killing 3 of them for my death but it's actually more gold for them. Yi gets 1200 gold shut down and Malphite 600 for the solo assist which is worth about 6 kills overall. What's worse is that Yi is now stronger than anyone on my team.
When I revive, I see a fight starting in bot lane and I know I can get there in time because I have Deadman's Plate and the Pathfinder rune. So I easily chase down Jin and now I can go mid and maybe take the tower that's low health but my support over chases and I turn to help. But he gets popped and now I'm in a 1v3 and get chased down for another death and a double kill for Master Yi. Now the game may be in danger but I was still thinking that's an easy win. So I need to review that death for my mistakes because I cannot control my team's mistakes but I can control mine and learn from them. So let me show you an example of how I review the game. After every game and before the next game starts, during the queue time and champ select, I spend just a few minutes watching all of my kills and my deaths, but I skip past everything else. This sounds like a chore, but you'll actually be surprised at how fun it actually is. So give it a try just once. You will enjoy it, I promise. Because watching your kills will make you feel really good about your plays and will increase your confidence in your gameplay. But more importantly, it reinforces the right plays to make the next time you're in a similar situation. But when I watch my deaths, I don't beat myself up over it. I simply ask myself, what should I have done here? And that is what I try next time. Or at least I will know what I shouldn't do. Now I know the plays that work and what I should change next time I'm in the same situation. Your good plays give you confidence and your bad plays make you humble. This is an important balance because if you're overconfident and not humble, you will play over aggressive and feed, or you will throw the game when you're ahead. But if you're not confident and too scared, then you won't even attempt to make the plays to get ahead. So on Apple devices, use screen recording option and add it to your drop down menu. Or if you're on Android, download a screen recording app. I've gotten so efficient at doing this that now I can go through a full gameplay footage during queue time. After the kill, I could have gone mid or bot for a tower. The support overextends but here I should have left him as soon as I saw Malphite because I have my ultimate ignite or flash. After he gets one shot and killed, I knew that a kill is no way possible here and I just needed to survive. So here I needed to activate my stone plate for 130% extra health and use my shield for 60% damage reduction. So I would have been at over 4000 health and would have easily survived. But I get hit by Nami ultimate just before my shield activates and I get bursted down before I'm free from the CC and can finally use my shield and stone plate. But I still somehow almost get out. If I played it slightly better, I would have survived. But if I played it well, I could have turned with my Annie to win the fight overall. But we lose the fight because of my mistakes, not because the support overextended. It was my decision to then overextend with him and then my slow reaction to shield and stone plate. I revive and head down mid and then I sense a fight starting bot lane again. Here I see Pike getting a good stun onto the carry so, so now I can ignite, silence and ultimate for the kill. But for some reason the Pike doesn't activate his stun on time and Jin just flashes away. So I go and thresh with my silence and should have ulted him before the silence ends but I fail the timing and he also gets away. We are still stronger so we go for the drake, but unfortunately my mid and support split up and Annie wastes her stun and then still stays around without her ultimate and they both get engaged on. Now I'm forced to help them otherwise they die for free. But I mess up again and get knocked up by another Nami ultimate because I thought it would pass by me before I get there. And then the slow from her ultimate is so strong that I have to use my ultimate to gap close before Yi kills everyone. But he kills them anyway and can easily run away because of his ultimate move speed. I then turn back for the dragon which of course was a silly move because they're all still alive. Here I could have also flash silenced him then spin for a bit and then ultimate when he's half health for a kill and we would have won that fight. 
but instead I ran face first into the wave and then had to waste my ultimate and still couldn't save my team. Then I should have backed off instead of baiting my team into getting aced. Now I'm pissed at the team because I didn't realize my own mistake during the heat of the battle. Now I'm kind of desperate to do something and I get baited by my demolish rune and I try executing this tower. I get the tower but I bait my team into another bad fight. And Yi is now even stronger and they get our mid inhib also. We get back onto the map and push mid and then go push top. The Malfa overstays so we can get him, but my support sees the enemy Master Yi and for some reason still continues going this way. Fortunately the Ramus finally manages to stun Master Yi so it's a free kill. All our carries needed to do was stay behind me and Ramus and Master Yi would have been useless. I then try pinging Baron but my team doesn't want to which is fine I guess because it could have been risky. Next dragon fight, Malphite engages onto my team, so I start looking around for where Master Yi is. I see him and try getting to him, but again I get stopped by Nami Wave. So I target Thresh with my silence before I can get to Yi, but I forget to cancel the target lock. I then unfortunately ultimate Malphite instead of Yi, and then he uses Hourglass really well, and then I don't dodge the bubble. A team fight full of mistakes. Now the Yi has his resets and there's nothing we can do. I heal up a bit and try executing him at Dragon but I get killed before I can silence. Reviewing the death I realized I needed to silence him first so he doesn't alpha strike and it would have been a kill. I would have then healed up from Triumph and ran away. Next fight, Ramus catches out the Nami so I silence and ult. This time we have a team comp in the right positions with the tanks at the front. As long as they are targeting us, we win. Again I got back on the map, push out mid and then go push out top and rejoin with my team ASAP otherwise they might not make it without me. The next fight will be for the elders so I ward early on their side of the map so we can see them coming. But my Annie gets caught again and dies. But luckily for us Master Yi goes in too early so we can easily focus him. I silence before ult but because he built tenacity my silence ends before my ultima goes off so he dodges it with his alpha strike. But he's still too low and he's frontlining so we get him. We lose 2 players for just Master Yi but it's worth it because he is all of their damage. So I retreat and heal for a bit and try stopping their recalls because the Elder is about to spawn. Malphite engages but doesn't realize that they are useless without Master Yi. Ramus also gets a really nice flank onto their backline. Now the Elder fight is 3 vs 5 and they have to fight for it because it's Elder. Here I'm just waiting for someone to overextend so I can turn. My support gets a really good engage onto the mid laner so I follow up with damage but I save my ult for Yi. 
and this time I ult him just after he comes out of alpha strike so he can't dodge it. We kill them both, get elder and chase down the thresh for an ace. Then my Annie gets caught again and I can't do much here because Garen has no lockdown ability. And then I don't have to recall here because I'm already full build and I will heal up with my passive anyway so I just stay and keep the waves pushed. But again my support does some foolery and gets himself killed for nothing and now it's 4v5 and we should be careful because if we lose a team fight here they can end. But my Ramus engages into the dark. Luckily he lands onto the Master Yi and almost kills him. So he's now low enough for me to ult him. But still he has his alpha strike to dodge my ultimate. He actually comes to me and starts with alpha strike for some reason so it's a free kill. I know he'll appear behind me now so I just need to ult in this direction and it's a win. But he's so fast that he quickly gets to the other side and my ultimate target is completely off and ends up targeting Malphite. And by the time I try to readjust I'm eating his dust because he's out of here. It looked like a really easy execute but in real time I wasn't expecting him to be so fast. But anyway, I realize he's out of the fight, so I turn to help my team. I can see that these guys are pretty much dead, so I go for Jin. And he flashes away. But look what happened behind me. My team is dead, and somehow Yi has a double kill. Well, luckily I still have my ultimate for him, but what actually happened back there? As I was chasing them away, my Ramus dies, which gave Master Yi an assist which resets his ultimate and his alpha strike. So he turned back pretty much as soon as I turned, which I didn't realize. If I kept zoning him away, we would have won that fight. But it's fine, I guess. Let's just finish him with my ultimate. And of course, he reset his alpha strike with more kills. But I can still kill him because he's low, right? Nope. He played the team fight almost perfectly after getting ulted by Ramus. Even if I ulted him here, he would have hourglassed and then would have ran away. They then chased me down for a kill. And my support goes for the kill instead of peeling for me. And dies also and then we lose the game. I end the screen recording so I can review the game before the next game starts. So after the game, I quickly run through all of the fights I had in the game, where I either got kills or died. This game was really long, so there's about 20 big fights. And to analyze each fight, it takes me about 10 to 20 seconds because I've been doing this for a bit, so I'm really efficient now. So it might take you a bit longer, but regardless, it's fun to do, so it doesn't really matter. So from just analyzing this one game, I noticed so many of my mistakes that were actually easy to avoid. So next time, I will have these mistakes in mind a lot more now that I've analyzed them with a logical state of mind. Because during a high pressure game, you don't even notice your little mistakes, let alone remember them. Because what most players do after a game like this is they get upset and angry or various other emotions so they then just blame the team for losing the game. They might then stop playing for the day and will never learn from all the mistakes that they themselves made. Not only that, but they won't even remember the good plays because, because they got so discouraged after losing the game. They think they played well and deserved to win. But just because you played good early and got fed doesn't mean you also played good for the rest of the game because what usually happens when you get fed is that you get overconfident and end up making a lot of over aggressive mistakes which result in throwing the game. Yes, it's hard to carry a bad team but as you saw here, if I hadn't made pretty much any one of those mistakes, I would have carried that game. 
Of course, your team will make mistakes, but they will do that in every single game, and so will the enemy team. You have no control over that. The only thing you can control is minimizing your mistakes and punishing the enemy for their mistakes. But you can't ever minimize your mistakes if you first don't even acknowledge them and then you never go back to analyze them. And that's not the worst part. Most players do actually know they could have played it better. But because they're so emotional after losing a game, instead of reflecting, they start looking elsewhere to put the blame as a coping mechanism. Which is standard human behavior and trust me, there will always be other things you can put the blame on to cope with the fact that you also didn't play it right. The only thing you have control over is your own actions so it only makes sense to put your energy into that and not waste it on something so counterproductive as pointing at others. That is where you will find true growth. This not only applies to Wild Drift, but to everything in life. Thank you and good luck.